The two-weight plan is a tool. The agencies and governments in, in the NEFCO region um, have used that tool because the bottom line is protecting water. Clean water, one of our most precious natural resources, but we haven't always treated it that way. After the burning of the Cuyahoga River in 1969, amid public concern for controlling water pollution, the federal government made a far-reaching commitment to clean water, creating the Federal Water Pollution Control Act amendments of 1972. The uh, oil spills on the river led to over five fires on the Cuyahoga River that were documented. And the year I graduated high school was the fifth and final fire in 1969 and led to marching on Washington and uh, passage of the Clean Water Act uh, was a symbol from Northeast Ohio. Commonly known as the Clean Water Act, the amendments were enacted with the goal to restore and maintain the chemical, physical, and biological integrity of the nation's waters. Today, Section 208 of the Clean Water Act remains a major strategy in this cause. Specifically, it requires that areas with substantial water quality problems develop a management plan to control pollution on a regional or area-wide basis. Ohio has six area-wide agencies that maintain water quality management plans. 208 made it possible for local entities in a metropolitan area to come together and look systemically at all the different types of pollution and to gather data that had never really been gathered. A uh, big picture look and big picture solutions. By federal law, Ohio cannot issue discharge permits for wastewater treatment facilities that conflict with 208 water quality management plans. Beyond managing flows to publicly owned wastewater treatment works, 208 plans compile and provide information about surface water quality conditions in Ohio. They consider development trends and their implications for water quality and wastewater treatment needs. It allows for all parties on a particular discharge or a particular uh, sewer extension or plant expansion. Uh, it provides for uh, that public input. Uh, it provides for the uh, occasional intergovernmental squabbles uh, to be discussed and solutions uh, developed. For areas without centralized wastewater treatment, 208 plans provide information about on-site wastewater treatment systems, the many types, their water quality impacts, and how to improve their management. They also describe the impacts of non-point source pollution from diffuse sources, such as stormwater runoff and stream bank erosion as well as identifying management needs and recommended management approaches. These 208 plans have teeth. They can help enforce how they want their counties to develop. Way before a developer proposal comes in and applies the heat and wants a proposal, these plans could be put in place and be a strong tool so that when the EPA issued a permit, it was always in concert with the local uh, leaders in the communities. It's not Ohio EPA's watershed is theirs. They we've to create a culture where they valued what was special about their watersheds. Water quality management planning, mandated by the Clean Water Act, accomplished by local stakeholders, is key to restoring and protecting water resources for regional economic growth. While such planning naturally has a local flavor, there are key elements of water quality management planning across the state. First, they have a regional scope, organized roughly on a watershed basis. Second, they identify facility planning areas that define geographic areas of service and who is responsible for that service. And third, have a designated management agency, usually public, who is designated for implementation of defined responsibilities for implementation of the plan. Um, there have also been a, a number of ways that uh, 208 has been used to help solve some problems that got stuck in the uh, conventional approaches through um, the regulatory agencies. A regional approach to wastewater treatment planning is critical to cost-efficient water quality protection, especially in urban areas. Planning for sanitary sewer collection and treatment on a watershed or sub-watershed basis allows sufficient coverage to build economies of scale while accounting for the geographic features that make environmental services naturally efficient. It's very good for 
the economic development of the community because when you plan these kind of facilities from an engineering standpoint, you really need to know what your boundaries are because the key issue is money. If the developers know that, the ser that they can get service, then factories uh, and uh, shopping centers, uh, homes and things like that can all be uh, developed. One of the challenges in doing tour planning is gathering the information you need to be able to define the needs and the problems. And uh, one of the most eye-opening experiences I had in doing that was gathering information about uh, sewer systems. And uh, one of our smallest villages, which shall remain nameless, um, it turned out that they didn't have any mapping of their system in hard copy, digitally, nothing. What they had was literally back of the envelope drawings. Our, our effort made it possible for that information to be captured and used for forever. Working together with, with eSkate and um, the Ohio EPA and even, you know, the, the um, Trumbull County engineer and, you know, everyone is a collaborative effort. That's been invaluable. You know, I've had people with experience giving me direction, you know, and, and it's been a huge help. Like I said, um, I've been working on this for two and a half years and, um, and this will be the third round of going after funding and it seems like we have really gained some momentum here because everyone is on board, everyone is supportive, and everybody's willing to work together. So, so those contacts and that, that help with direction has been invaluable. Everyone's been willing to, to take time and work, for, work with me you know, towards this goal. Working together and doing what we do best at Eastgate, which is bringing all the different funding players to the table and having that one-on-one -on -one conversation and finding out what we did, what we could do, and how we're going to achieve that. So we worked with um, Mayor McIntosh, with um, Ed Davis, myself, and the Ohio EPA, USDA, RCAP, and several under other funding sources. And we had, we called in the health department and the sanitary engineer's office to kind of make a checklist of what we know, what funding avenues we couldn't go towards and what funding avenues were the best. And that's how we came to the conclusion of going after um, Ohio EPA funding to make this a reality. What we also do best, and that's get the wheels in motion for um, the project as well as on Eastgate's end getting things ready so that when sanitary sewer does come to fruition within the village we're able to make sure that the Ohio EPA has all the documentation from an area-wide standpoint for the project. Ohio EPA wants to mirror the decisions of the locals as much as possible and the 208 plan is a key step in their consideration of uh, their permits and helps to reinforce that. 208 is like our whole, you know, basic guiding framework to determine uh, where we're at, where we'd like to be, and how we get there. The treatment prescriptions included in 208 plans document decisions by local and or regional bodies for how water pollution is to be prevented, reduced, mitigated, treated, or managed. It is the local authority's opportunity to define what options will be available and where. Prescriptions allow for clear guidance to landowners and developers as to what form of land development is intended in discrete geographic areas. The planning, it's so crucial, the 208 is so crucial to looking at the county and thinking, okay, this is where we are, but where are we gonna be in five years? Where are we gonna be in 10 years? And this stuff has to coordinate. Regular communication between communities, developers, Ohio EPA and area-wide agencies ensures good planning and development. It also helps to ensure that permits to install are consistent with the terms and prescriptions of the Water Quality Management Plan. It's very important to, we're having, uh, we often have some discussions and needs for looking at runoff and point source pollution and different things like that, that the 208 is a uh, facilitator of those discussions. It's incredibly important to look at um, not only economic development planning, but environmental planning. I mean, the, the, in my mind, the 208 kind of bridges those, that divide because you need, we need this for our water and sewer infrastructure, but at the same time, we have to place a greater priority and standards on our environment. So, I, I mean, I think they blend together well and they're both equally important in, in that sense. 
Ohio and its local communities continue to face growing environmental planning challenges as we move toward more sustainable and resilient communities. With 47 years of 208 planning proving successful results, Ohio's metropolitan regions continue to rely on this community-driven, comprehensive, science-based approach to provide a framework for informing sound decision-making at both state and local levels. I think we now have a working system that local governments buy into and recognize the benefit of regional service. 